All right, so what we're gonna show you is how to create a Google Drawing basics training number one. First step is go to my website, thirdgrade.xyz. Once you are there, click on hover over useful websites. Go down until you see Google Drive. Once you're in Google Drive, you're going to click New. And down at the very bottom, you have a link that says More. Hover over it. And then to the right, you'll see Google Drawings. Click it. Once you're in Google Drawings, you can go to, I want you to go to Insert. Down about halfway is called Word Art. Click on it. Inside here, I want you to type your name, Mr. Weir. And then once you've had it typed, click Enter. Once you are in here, you are going to make sure that you click on your name. See how when I click on my name, I get these handles? These little squares on the edges are handles. I want you to play with those for a minute. What you're going to do is you hover down at the bottom right or left and you'll get these double arrows. And you're just going to drag it out. And just kind of play with your name. Make it the size that you want it. On the right side and left sides you can square it up, stretch it out more rectangular, and then the top and bottoms will also let you square it up be more rectangular, so make your name how you would like it. Next, we are going to go to the font key. Now the fonts let you change the way your text looks, part of it. So you need to click on your text in order to see the handles. Once you have the handles, you'll see a thing to begin with it says Arial. This is your fonts. If you click on Arial, you got all of these fonts you can scroll down and pick and play with. Okay, so go ahead and play with that for a minute. Pick a font that you think would be kind of fun to have. Once you have your font picked, we're going to now change the color. Right here, you have the paint bucket tool. So again, you have to, in order to edit this, it has to be selected by clicking on it. So you're going to change the fill bucket. Go down and pick a color. And you can see that I can pick all sorts of colors. I could even make it transparent to where I just have a line. So I could color it if I wanted to print it out and have a little piece of coloring paper. Okay, so go ahead and pick a color. Now, let's show you some other ways to color it. So again, select your name, make sure the handles are there. Go up and click Fill Color, and then choose Gradient. Now in here with your gradients, what they do is they allow it to be shaded and uh, you know, lighter green at the top, darker green at the bottom. I can do a dark, a light green red at the top and a dark red at the bottom. Okay, so go ahead and pick a color that you'd like. Next, select your paint. Make sure you're selected again. Can't edit this unless it's selected. Click on the fill color tool, the paint bucket tool. Gradient, we're going to show you a, another way to make your colors for your name. Click the custom plus button and right in here you've got a way to make multiple colors. So what we're going to do is we're going to click the add button and then we're going to change the color. Click the add button and change the color. Click the add button and change the color. And you can drag, you can see how it's moving, your colors around a little bit. 
to make it real customized. You can also click this linear button and change it to radial, which will make it more circular. You can also change the angle of the direction the colors move. Okay, so pick an angle or change it to radial. You can make it top left like that with radial. So just play with it. Pick a few colors and then click OK. And then you can see that the name has changed to multicolored. The next thing we want to play with is the border color tool. Border color tool is right by the paint bucket. We're going to click it, it looks like a pencil, and we're going to select a color. And that color is the outline of the text. The border is the outline of the text. So let's say I want it red all the way around. Go ahead and pick a color. Next, because that's a real thin border, some of you may want a wide border. So right next to the border color tool, there's a border weight tool. Weight means how heavy it is. So we are going to click on it and you can change the thickness of the border. Like that. Okay, so go ahead and play with the thickness of the border. The last thing for this tutorial I want to show you are your format options. So again, if your name's not selected, it should be, but if not, click on your name to get your handles. Click on the format option. And then over here, we're gonna play with two things. We're gonna play with first the drop shadow. And the drop shadow is what creates a shadow to make it stand off of a page. And to do that, just change your distance to begin with. See how as I change the distance, you can see the shadow moving. So change the distance however you want. You can also change it to its transparency to be completely black or almost non-existent. You can also change your angle. Watch what happens as I change my angle. It moves all the way around. Okay, so pick your angle. The last thing you can do, well, not the last thing, but you can also change your blur. Do you want a blurry border or a blurry shadow? And then the last thing we can do with drop shadow is also change the color. It's kind of weird to have a colored shadow, but if it works with your project, then that's totally fine. So go ahead and choose a drop shadow. Next thing we want to do is change the reflection. So let's say we want it looking like it's next to water or next to a mirror, something like that. So your transparency will make it less visible. You can see my shadow down here changing visibility. You can change the distance. You can make it towards right there as if it's right on the water. And then you can change the size. How much of it do you want to be reflected? So go ahead and change that. So that's all there is to it for training number one. If there's any extra time, go ahead and play for a little bit longer.